Rotational casting by hand using TC-808 casting resin. In this video, I'm going to be showing the process of casting a resin little rat head duplicate using TC-808 jet black resin, and I'll be using the 5130 silicone mold made in a previous tutorial. Now, these little parts, I'll also be covering the process of painting those, just some quick painting tips at the end. And TC-808 is a tough, impact-resistant resin that's ideal for casting hollow parts like this that need to have high impact resistance. Now, when we're rotational casting like this, especially by hand, it's really important that we choose the right resin. Now, for this, I'll be using TC-808 casting resin, and this is a fast-setting resin, and we want something fast when we're rotational casting, especially by hand, so we get nice uniform parts and don't have to rotate the mold any longer than we absolutely have to. So this has a fast working time, a 10 to 20 minute demold, and also really important is the mix viscosity. This has a 200 centipoise mix viscosity, which means when we're rotating the mold, it will coat the mold evenly and give us a nice uniform cast inside the mold. If we use something too low viscosity, it will slump down to the lowest points of the mold and give us a very uneven cast. Now, this is also a very impact resistant, hard 75D, one to one mix ratio by weight, and this works well for functional parts. That's important if you're making prototypes or doing product development where you need functional physical properties. And this is also available in both Jet Black as well as the TC-808, the regular formula that cures white. And the regular 808 is ideal for times where we need to pigment that with the 6800 pigments or dyes. Now I'm measuring out my part B first, and you'll have to excuse the condition of that part B bottle. This had been used a lot in my shop. This is a really nice resin formula though, because it is very resistant to moisture contamination. And of course this mixes one to one by weight. So here I'm mixing up about 400 grams, 200 grams of part A, and 200 grams of part B by weight. Now, when you're estimating the amount of resin for rotational cast, I start with about a quarter of the volume of the mold. And then after I do a test cast, I work back from that point. But that is a good starting point. And that two minute working time goes by fast. So you wanna make sure you take time to stir accurately and thoroughly, and then immediately get that transferred into the mold. So make sure you scrape the sides and the bottom of the mixing bucket. And now we're going to pour that into our mold. And you see, I have a little silicone stopper standing by. And you might've seen in a previous tutorial, anytime I have leftover silicone, I pour that into little wax paper cups or Dixie cups. And that way I can use those little plugs to hold scalpels and X-Acto knives. Or in this case, I can use it as a plug to seal the mold before casting. Now this is where you want to be very conscious of the working time of your resin. And remember that higher temperature will speed up the resin set time and cooler temperatures will slow it down. Now it's a good idea to keep track of your time with a smartphone timer. Set it for about two minutes if you're working with 808. And that way you know exactly what's happening inside the mold. Now as I'm rotating the mold, you'll notice I'm doing it on two different axes, just like if it was on a rotational casting machine. So I'm using my chest there to support it and rotating it one direction on say the X axis, and then I'm gonna turn it to the Y axis and grab it by the edge of the mold and rotate it that way. And that just ensures that I get good coverage all over the inside of the mold. Just checking to see if you're still watching and paying attention. So now we're just gonna go on and keep rotating it like that, alternating between those two axes. And once I've hit that two minute mark, I'm ready to check the mixing cup and see if it's moving around a little bit. It's winter time here in my shop and I just wanna make absolute sure that the cold didn't slow that down too much. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more time and then set it down like that and allow that to set up completely. Now, this resin again has a two minute working time and about a 10 to 20 minute demold at room temperature. But remember when you're casting thin walled parts, you wanna give it as much time as possible because those thinner cross sections will take longer to hit full strength. So this is after about 20, 25 minutes or so before I'm demolding this part. Now, when your resin parts are fresh, that's the best time to do any cleanup work with a razor knife or any sanding work. That's when you're gonna have the easiest sanding. So just be prepared for that and be ready to clean up your part right out of the mold. 
And I didn't use any mold release when I cast this part, so this is pretty much ready to move on to the painting step. But if we did use mold release, for that we would use E302 mold release. Now, if you use E302 mold release for your castings, remember that that will need to be washed off the part. So just remember, resin casts with E302 mold release should be washed with warm water and detergent before painting to remove any of the E302 release residue. Now, once you've removed any release residue, if you have any, then it's time to apply a primer. Now for this, I'm going to be using the SEM High Build Primer. And I'm using that just to help me with those seams, any place where I had some rough sanding that fills in any of those areas. And I'm gonna let that cure for about 30 minutes or so, and then I'm ready to apply paint. Now for this, I didn't really wanna do a proper paint job on my Pizza Rat. I just wanna do something simple for the sake of the video. So I'm gonna finish this out and make a graven image of the Pizza Rat using some gold spray paint. So there you go, there's Pizza Rat in all his glory with gold spray paint. Now, as usual, I'll put all of the material links in the video description, so be sure to check those out. But this is a great way to produce hollow functional parts or prototypes that need to have high impact resistance and that will easily take paint if cast properly. Like I said, this makes really tough parts. You could throw these little pizza rats across the room and they would hold up just fine. So great way to make strong, impact-resistant hollow parts. Now, if you missed the two-part tutorial, here are the links to that video series on the shim mold. So be sure to check that out. And of course, if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, thanks for watching.